Growing up in uh, high school and first few years of college, I was a worship leader. I thought that was where the gospel started and ended, was in worship. As most worship leaders you know probably feel about the same way. Uh, finally, I figured out that that really wasn't the case. And I was in a service one time and the Lord uh, really moved in the worship service. And the pastor had said something that kind of dumbfounded me. He said, this must be a result of your holy living this week. I thought, what is he talking about? You know, God just moved in the worship service. Why would it have anything to do with your holy living? And then I began to be a skeptic of my own idea of what worship truly was in our lives and what it meant to be a true worshiper. Romans 12, 1, uh, 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Paul's setting a new precedent here. They were all familiar with the cultish practice of sacrificial system in both religious and secular. So he's setting a new precedent here of living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his perfect, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you think about conformity for a few minutes and our idea of a Jesus-centered, a Christ-centered message is in that uh, it's countercultural. It's, it's something different, conforming. If you look at billboards when you're going down the street, at any advertisement you see uh, uh, on television, you see what the world is trying to get you to do and conforming to that constant pressure. Think about a piece of sheet metal, if you will, and conforming. You stamp a fender for a car out of thousands of pounds of that sheet metal is a pressure is applied to that sheet metal and is conformed to the opposite image of the die that's used in that fender. You see when you're converging your mind and your body are old, your spirit's new. So this process of transformation, this process of renewing must take place through this uh, transforming. And one of my son's uh, uh, favorite books is uh, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Anybody read that before? Uh, he crawls up on my lap, and of course, once it's probably a hundred or more times, he's, he's going to be three this month, that we've read this book, uh, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. You know the story. He eats everything in sight, lollipops, uh, popsicles, and uh, the muffins, and, uh, and then my son says, and then he had a tummy ache. You know, that's his, that's his favorite part right there. He had this tummy ache. Of course, he builds a cocoon, and he comes out this beautiful butterfly, and then he throws his hands in the air and says, yay, you know, he, he's a butterfly now. He went through that transformative process. The Greek word there is metaphormeo, where we derive our English word metamorphosis. Exactly. The caterpillar goes through this metamorphosis, and he's not just different. He's not just changed. He's transformed. He's completely different. That butterfly will never go back to being a caterpillar. You see, our lives once were a certain way, but now we're being changed. That we're renew, renovate. Okay, that you're being changed. The only renovation process I've ever been a part of is when we renovated our church about four years ago. The sanctuary platform was about this high. You had to look up to see the preacher. Okay, the carpet was 1970 red. Anybody know that color? <laughs> Ugliest carpet I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was put in in 1986. They must have gotten a good deal on it. That's all I can say. Okay, uh, two giant columns on the either side of the front of the stage. I mean, it was... Horrid. You felt like you stepped back in time when you uh, walked into our sanctuary. Thank God it all looks much different now. Uh, but we ripped out all of that old carpet, and I was so happy to throw that in the dumpster. Okay, We ripped out all the old and put in new. And as Olivia said, that renewing process into God's Word, we bring in God's Word into our lives, bringing out the world's old ways, the conformity of the world, in with the new, and we're changed. That transformative process is what worship truly, truly is. That renovation that happens in your life. So true worship is not defined by how we sing or how we praise, but true worship is how you live your life. 
When I was in college, my best, uh, this is in secular college, I went to university, in Northern Kentucky University, and uh, my best friends were um, uh, dating girls, and uh, I didn't have a girlfriend, so I left me alone a lot at night. So at, at night, and on the weekends, I would sit there and read my Bible, and I would pray for hours, sometimes hours in the evening. And one day, me and my best friends and their girlfriends, and you know, of course, we're at this uh, graduation party for a friend from high school, and we were playing basketball, and they all knew me for being one of the hot-tempered persons, okay? I was athletic, I did a lot of sports in high school, very aggressive, overly aggressive, and uh, they knew me as a person that would go back at them. So, of course, they being the friends that they are, one of them pushed me, I went for a loose ball, one of them pushed me in the back and was sliding across the grass uh, off the court and had grass stains all over. Stood up and they fully expected me to turn around swinging because that's what I would have done. I would have just turned around and went after them. But instead of doing that, I laughed it off and they begin to call me the new Scott. <laughs> the new Scott was different, transformed, changed. You see, at that moment, when I turned around and didn't go after them, is when I began to worship. That's worship. Father, I pray that you would help us all, anoint us all, Lord Jesus, for this transformative process of worship. Change us. Make us something new and completely different, Lord. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.